Yeah, go All for right. it. Round two, welcome <laughs> welcome to Inverticast. Uh we we had, you know, a timing issue because I don't know, it's this America. Um <laughs> in any case today, uh welcome to Inverticast. Obviously, I'm Leah from Torrent Leah, and with me as always is Simon from the Mantis Garden. Hello, Simon. Hello, Leah. You're right. <laughs> Awesome. So today we're going to be talking about cephalopods, which is an order of invertebrates that are found in the ocean um, or in the seas. And they are organized uh, by, like, they're highly advanced and organized, and they include octopuses, squids, cuttlefish, and nautiluses. Um, there's an extinct a uh, cephalopod that is also included in this, which is the a ammonoid, 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 yeah, ammonite. <laughs> That's it, ammonite. <laughs> Sorry, it's in my notes. Um, yeah, and then yeah. So the best known feature of a cephalopod would be its arms. Uh, a lot of people mistake them for being tentacles. Um, they are not tentacles. They are arms. Uh, except for squids, which have two tentacles. <laughs> so, are you going to tell um, the difference? Sorry? Are you going to tell them the difference? Between tentacles and arms? Yes, tentacles are really, they're long, slender type arms that actually have an, a widened portion at the end of them that contains uh, suckers. And that is like the scientific term. I couldn't find the actual scientific term of what the suckers are, but no, they're just called suckers. Um, <laughs> oh. And they they have hooks. They also have like little claw-like hooks on on the suckers and stuff. So that's the difference between tentacles and arms and the arms. Um, although octopus arms do have two rows of suckers that go down the entire length of the arm. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that's pretty much the main difference. Um, so octopus are capable of learning and they have a considerable intelligence. Uh, I'm sure you, uh, a lot of people have heard of, uh, the octopus named Inky at the New Zealand aquarium, who was an escape artist, found his way out of the aquarium and <laughs> he's pretty famous for escaping, um, which Luckily, he found his way to, you know, a saltwater source, like the actual ocean. But, yeah, it, it escaped. So that's another... Is that the one that got out of the tank? When it uh -huh. crossed the floor and went into a drain and out to the sea? Yep, that's the one. Ah, right. Because when you said Inky, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd never heard of that. But I heard <laughs> yeah. it. And now I know what you're talking about. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. That's... it's. It's part of, uh, you know, uh, uh, that octopus was using actually a few of its features, one of them being that they can squish and, like, squeeze into all sorts of places that you don't think that they'd be able to, but they do. Um, and they are very, very smart. Like, they can, like I said, they can solve problems. They can find their way through mazes. Um, and there's been a lot of research done as to like how smart they really are so i mean i'm sure you've seen probably some videos of that of like the octopus you know that they put food in one like cat you know like a, a a portion of like a tank or something and then they make it to where if the octopus figures out to push this button or whatever and then like a lever comes up and they get the food um and they figured it out they figure it out every time <laughs> so um, there have also been field studies in the tropical seas near Indonesia that have recorded octopuses exhibiting uh, tool using behaviors. So that's another uh, indication of that intelligence. Um, and most cephalopods possess chromatophores, which are color pigment cells in their skin. So they either are color pigment or reflective cells. Um, and the colors and the patterns are usually exhibited during specific behaviors, like attacking prey, camouflaging, uh, resting, and alarm or defense. So uh, 
another really great example of that would be uh, a good example of like an alarm coloration would be the uh, blue ring to octopus, which um, is really beautiful and quite colorful. Um, and it's it can change its blue rings to like different sizes and, and whatnot. Um, but that is an alarm mechanism because they are very toxic. And we'll get into that. So we'll we'll talk about those guys. Um, so let's talk about octopus first, because um, that's probably the, the most well-known cephalopod. They are generally any any eight-armed mollusk. Um, they range greatly in size, so they can be like the smallest, I think, is two inches, about five centimeters, to 18 feet, which is 5.4 centimeters. Um, their arm span of uh, can be of almost nine meters, which is 30 feet. So the largest largest octopus known is the giant Pacific octopus, um, which I believe the largest was measured at about 30 feet with the arms and everything. Um, they do have a secular body, meaning their their body is segmented, if you will, and they have large, complex eyes and eight arms. And eight arms, each arm has the two rows of the fleshy suckers, as I mentioned before. And their mouth is the only part of them that has act, an actual bone, which is a bony, like beak kind of protrusion. And they actually use that for like prying open clams or mollusks and stuff because they are. Um, they are carnivorous, so they do eat other creatures. <laughs> so, um, let's see what else. Yeah, they have three hearts and blue blood. I thought that was really interesting. They have, you know, a closed circulatory system, just like we do, um, but they have three hearts. So that's, that's really impressive. Um, and in the order of octopoda or octopus, there are 289 species of octopus, and the name octopus um, is directly translated from Greek for eight-footed, so obviously. They do have a brain, however, it's more spread throughout their entire body, so two-thirds of their neurons are, are within the arms. So essentially, their arms have their own brains. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, what that what that really means is that they can be using one arm to like have a mollusk and be eating that at its beak and then the other arm can be doing something entirely different like like crawling across the ocean floor or you know catching another mollusk stuff like that so um pretty amazing they have I an excellent because i've got older what what Mine, they work independently from my brain since I've got older. <laughs> I wrong. wish. I don't no, know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they are an amazing uh, thing, though, that the, the way that, you know, that the brains can, can communicate with each other when they want and ignore each other when they want. It's, I think that's fantastic. I, like, I agree. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go over here. These two arms are going to go over here and and undo this bottle well those arms over there are going to look for for shells and crabs and stuff so yeah that's just mental it is it's totally mental and then and the last three arms are the ones you walking need to secretary get an octopus <laughs> that's what you need. for sure um there was one last little tidbit i'm sorry oh yeah so they have an excellent sense of touch and taste so with their arms and those suckers, um, they can they can feel very very well, so they know what they're touching. But they also taste what they're touching, so that's a lot of input for one. <laughs> for what? Yeah. Can you imagine? That helps. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine being able to taste with your hands? Just the places like... these things have been. <laughs> <laughs> it's gross. Yeah. I don't know if I want to taste some of the things that I touch. I, I I'm no. not I'm not privy to that. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so a few species of octopus that are of um, note, I guess, are the ones that I found. I found a few, like three, that I thought were really interesting and worth mentioning. 
So the common octopus, um, which is the most studied of all the octopus species because it's one of the most widely distributed, um, it's found in the shallows of tropical, subtropic, and temperate waters from the eastern Atlantic all the way to the South African coast. Um, they are the most intelligent of all the invertebrates of the world. Um, and they're the ones that if you ever like look up a picture of an octopus, you're probably going to find a picture of the common octopus or octopus vulgaris is the um, scientific name. And then uh, the next octopus that I thought was, was interesting and worth noting is the giant Pacific octopus. So this is the enteroctopus, enteroctopus uh, def, deflini, deflini. Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> it's the, the largest species in the world and can weigh about 150 pounds and be about 15 feet. Um, and that's without the arm length, which is pretty massive for an octopus. Like it's, that's, it's pretty, pretty huge. Um, the next one I have is the Dumbo octopus, which is actually known. They're actually a group of octopus known as the umbrella octopuses. So, uh, Grimpo, <laughs> Grimpotiotis. Grimpotiotis. It's easier if you just say serene. Huh? There's the, the, you've got serene, you've got in serene. Serene are the ones with a little yeah. thing on top. Yeah, they're, in uh, the rest. they're really interesting because they're the deepest, like they live in the deep sea. And so they are the, they have been found at, uh, I mean, depths as, as deep as like 13,000 feet, which is pretty incredible for any creature. Um, so they, they definitely dwell like in the deep seas and that's also why they're very small. They're not very big at all. Um, and they, their arms aren't quite as long as other octopuses and they tend to like curl them inward, um, kind of in a spiral. Yeah. <laughs> um, and of course the last cool octopus that species that I found was, as I mentioned before, the blue ringed octopus or the Hapalaclana octopus. They're venom, it, yeah, they're scary. These And these guys aren't deep sea octopuses. They can be found in pretty much tropical, subtropical regions, um, but their venom is a thousand times more toxic than cyanide. And these guys, they carry enough of their venom to kill 26 human beings. <laughs> so, no yeah. surprise where you find them. Yeah, right. Australia. <laughs> Australia, yes, Australia, definitely. I that's think unusual for Australia to get an animal that's evil. Yeah. Well, an animal we're... like an octopus, tiny little things they are, and yeah, it's evil. They yeah, they're evil. they're not very large at all, but they're no. absolutely like horrifying just just for that fact alone. Yeah. Um, I do believe I was warned when I spent time in Japan. For that two years, yeah. I was warned of the blue ringed octopus um, because, well, Okinawa is a tropical island, and so I'm pretty sure that they they tend to be found around that island quite a bit. Um, and that for some reason, they also like warned us about the Portuguese man of war, which is not an octopus. Um, jellyfish. It's, yeah, it's more in the jellyfish family, uh, but those those things are terrifying as well. <laughs> We have um, them here. Yeah. You do? Yeah, yeah, all around. We've got so many uh, jellyfish and, and, and other things like that around here. It's, it's unbelievable. I believe it. That's amazing. I know. And, and, the, and Europe's just, you know, it's the way it is, the way it is, the Atlantic. Yeah. It's great for all sorts of weird stuff. I mean, we even get great white sharks here. Oh, wow. Yet. So it's, it, there's a lot of, I mean, I'm not going to. Not gonna argue with any marine biologists out there because I, I that's not what I do. Uh, yeah, right. But I know what we get around here on the coast and that, and uh, we do have a lot of octopus. I've seen a lot of octopus. Um, sure. In uh, rock pools, quite small ones. We cool. do get them washed up. Uh, and another thing we get, which I'm sure you're going to move on to, is uh, cuttlefish. Yeah, cuttlefish. Those as well. 
Yeah, cuttlefish are pretty interesting. They actually have, they have one bone. It's kind of a spiny protrusion that is on the alongside their backside. Um, and they, they do they have arms? I don't remember if I, I don't think they I. Have I sort of face palms. I don't know what to call them. Um, right, right. <laughs> they're they're kind of weird looking. I don't. They look like they look like. Uh, Davy Jones out of uh, Oh right like from the Caribbean. Pirate Pirate Pirate. <laughs> that's that's the sort of thing they've got going on with the face. Or uh, I thought they actually had cuttlefish bones here, but I just realized that swaps them out for limestone. So uh, yeah. yeah. Um yeah, that's the, they're really freaky. I mean they are the speed at which they can change as well or change their colours is, is is another amazing uh thing. I know that octopus change it's 220 milliseconds they can change color like that. Wow. Whereas a uh, chameleon takes about 15, 20 seconds to change. Right. So if you, if you look at the, the differences there between, you know, right, I, right. I'm in the background, you know, instantly. So if you yeah, see um, it was chasing it, you know, if it was a shark or something, they ate them and he was chasing it. And it went somewhere around the corner and changed. You've lost you it. Don't, you don't know it. Yeah, you know yeah, you lost, lost it. it well, so, and chameleons, yeah. it's pretty interesting that you mentioned chameleons and their ability to um, change color as well. But they only do that as camouflage and yeah. kind of a defense mechanism, whereas octopus use their color changing abilities for all sorts of things. So it's not just camouflage, but also. Um, like a defense, you know, defense mechanism. So that would be that camouflage, but also for attacking prey or luring prey closer to them. Um, so they will use their color changing abilities to to do that. I know they talk. I, I know they talk. Oh, I just found I found that really color. fascinating. Ah. <laughs> I found that really fascinating. I four layers of skin. I'd have to get uh, marine biologist on the job. But I think there's three or four different layers of skin on an octopus. Well, the top one is chromatophores, and then you've, you've got another one underneath that, another one underneath that, another one underneath that. They all reflect different uh, light waves, uh -huh. which creates the, the, the full spectrum that they can they can so like mix into. Which That's is fascinating. I mean, just having them on the you know the top of your skin and just being that change. I'd love that. That's an ability I would like. That would be a cool ability. I yeah. agree. <laughs> the, the smelling with the hands business. That, that they can keep that. I don't want. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I don't want to taste that I touch. No, thank you very much. But I don't want <laughs> color. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's um, been fortune holidays, wouldn't it? Brown. <laughs> there you go. Done. Instant I, tan. I believe. Uh, yeah, dude. Instant tan. That would be amazing. Um, and also, I, I just also wanted to mention that the the oldest record or of a fossil of an octopus is actually about three hundred and fifty million years old. So they've been around quite a while, quite a while. Um, and the next, so our next creature would be squids, and <laughs> these guys are two hundred and forty eight million years old. Um, there are more than 300 species of these 10 armed, um, basically, uh, Tuthalaclea order. To, yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah, there you go. <laughs> cool, cool. That's it, yeah. <laughs> That's just the Greek for it. <laughs> yeah, just the Greek. So, just the... so uh, yeah, yeah, go, there you go. Have it. It's all Greek to me. Whatever. Yeah, okay. I should have named them. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing things again. Yeah, actually, squids are pretty impressive. Um, they have an elongated tubular body with a short, compact head. Um, and two of their arms are developed into long tentacles, which we were talking about earlier. Um, they expand at the ends with four rows of suckers, and they also include uh, two horny rings at the, at, in those suckers that help them like grip and hold on to things. Um, they do use them more as arms than than uh the, their other arms if you will um so they use them more as like hands and and 
Yeah. And if they lose one of their tentacles, it will not grow back. So that's another pretty interesting thing about them. Um, their eyes are actually almost as complex as a human being's eyes. So they have pretty decent vision um, comparable to our own, which is fascinating. And then they, uh, their eyes are actually on either side of their head. So they don't, they're not front facing eyes like ours. They're just kind of like our ears. Um, uh, they can be luminescent as well, and they bear numerous light organs, also those uh, those chromatophores and the photo, photo what are they called, photo, photo, photophores, something like that. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> Lumino, luminescence, you know. Luminous. Yeah. And there have been found, um, there have been found to, to be bioluminescent as well, like species of squid that are bioluminescent especially in the deep, deep sea. Um, so, you know, I, I'm sure you've heard of the vampire squids. Um, they're, they're pretty cool because they, they're bioluminescence. It, it's almost like a, like an airport runway. So like their, their little lights just kind of light in a synchronized. It's really fascinating to check it out. If you haven't, if you haven't seen it, you definitely need to check that one out because it's, it's pretty fascinating. Um, they also serve as food for a lot of species throughout the ocean, like sperm whales and bony fishes. And of course, us, we do like to eat squid. Um, they also vary in size from like one third inch to the largest living invertebrate in the entire world, which would be 13 meters, 43 feet. There also have been stories and reports of a 60 foot squid which um, has not been like scientifically confirmed. Although <laughs> this, when we get into mythology, that's when this is gonna become important <laughs> because obviously like there's, there's been some tales of some very giant squids or giant octopus. Um, yeah, that's what I thought about squids. Do you have anything to add about them? Yeah, so a giant squid is a bit silly. My son isn't afraid of anything but giant squid for some reason. <laughs> He's absolutely terrified of giant squid. I don't know why. Well, oh, that's okay. I mean, say or anything like that. He won't go anywhere near it because of giant squid. He's just just obsessed with these these giant squid. <laughs> and he's not kid. And he's thirty five. Yeah, so I'm talking like a six year old. He's. I mean, they are. Five. They're they're kind of scary for sure. I mean, it, yeah. once we get into the mythology, when you hear about some of the stuff that we've we've you know been telling each other about squids and octopus for centuries like i get it <laughs> well uh, <laughs> yeah I, I think um i think we watched uh nemo captain nemo uh-huh back in the day and i think that did it <laughs> i believe it i think, I I think that it. definitely did it um but then you see them like you see loads of like the old uh like you say the, the old mythological uh especially the Greek ones, uh -huh. the movies where you've got the squid smashing the boats in half. I mean, there's even one in, uh, the Kraken is basically a The squid. Kraken, yeah, that the one is a... Uh, octopus. You know. uh, that one's a Scandinavian, or a Norse, yeah. essentially. Yeah, that's I... where, yeah, that's where that one originate, originated. Um, so that's pretty, it's pretty fascinating. So, okay, but the next cephalopod that I felt was um, kind of interesting and worth noting would be the Nautilus, yeah. um, which they're, they're really interesting because they're not your typical cephalopod. They have many arms, like they can have up to 90 arms, apparently. So they have quite a few arms, um, but they're also known as a living fossil because yeah. they are 450 million years. Um, like that's the oldest record of a nautilus but also they have changed very very little in that 450 million years so this is a creature that as as i said is is kind of a living fossil um but they they basically create their own shell which would was probably that that calcium sodomite you know or so uh, yeah and what happens is as they grow see they're they're hatched and born with 
four chambers of that shell. And so as they grow, they grow a new chamber and then they, the, the creature itself will basically move into the next largest chamber and then build a little wall between the, la- the old one. But here's the, here's the cool thing about them is that those old chambers that they used to live in or have moved to, they don't go to waste. They actually instead fill up with, fill those up with gas so that they can float. So they, it affects their buoyancy in the water. So if they want to dive deeper down into the water, they just allow water to come into those chambers. If, if they want to be a little more floaty, if you will, they will just put, you know, release the water and add gas into those chambers. And that will allow them to uh, be more buoyant. So it's, I thought that was a really, really interesting aspect of a Nautilus. Like, just that ability to, to use the chambers, the old chambers in that You're way. You're actually Captain Nemo again, aren't you? Because his ship was called the Nautilus. The Nautilus, yeah. <laughs> he had the chambers that used to flood them and side went them down. So, yeah. Yeah. I suppose yeah. that's, you know, that's the reason why it was called the Nautilus. Um, they also are really worth noting because... Um, as their their nautilus grows and stuff it grows in in a spiral like shape um which a lot of people call it the sacred geometry um or the golden ratio which i believe uh what is, what is that there's there's a there's a, a scientific term it's like a it's the spiral the golden ratio sacred ge- geometry but it's, these are all terms for the same thing um but it's it's really fascinating because this sacred geometry is found in all sorts of other uh, things that are found in nature. You okay? Is your neck? Oh, oh I'm next to it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, outside. Simon. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, but yes, the sacred geometry is found in like all sorts of things all throughout nature. So like sunflower seed pods, that very middle portion of the sunflower also has the golden ratio. Um, you can find it in snail, uh, the snail shells. That spiral is is very, um, it's very prominent in all through nature, and so that's why they call it the uh, sacred geometry. So that's that's fascinating stuff, don't you think? I just find it amazing anyway. I, I, I think the Nautilus. If uh-huh. you show your average person in the street a picture of a Nautilus. <laughs> They'd know what it is. They'd seen it before. But if you right. ask them to tell you the name of it, they probably wouldn't know it. They'll draw a blank. Yeah. Because that it is it's it's one of them it's one of them creatures that we see the imagery all the time, but we don't actually hear the name of it because there's not much on them, is it? There's not much information back it about, you know. But uh, it's it's like I didn't I didn't know what they were called for many many years, but I knew <laughs> what it was. Right, know? right. I knew it was a cephalopod, and I knew what it was, and I knew it was old, and it was a, a living fossil. But I didn't know its bloody name, and that was that was been many many years. And it's just because it's it's one of the things you don't hear the name of, you know. Lily nailed it. Thank you, Lily, so much. But she said uh, it took me some time. But did you mean the Fibonacci, Leah? Yes, I did. I meant the Fibonacci sequence is um oh it's that right. mathematical sequence yeah. that just it's the perfect spiral within the rectangle. Um it's the same thing. That's the golden ratio or the the yeah. Yeah. That's why I married her. <laughs> right. She told me it's like that. <laughs> well, she's so smart. I mean I, I I can see why. Like she's amazing. All right, let's uh <laughs> let's go ahead and jump into the mythology. Um um, yeah, I mean, there, there's so much. There's so much on octopuses and squids. So that's actually really cool um, because these guys, I mean, they've been talked about in mythology and like ancient civilizations for a lot. <laughs> so I, we'll I, start. I we'll... never did an ounce of research on any of the mythology. I never do. No. Uh, I think squid and octopus are probably the one i know the most about simply because it's just talked about so much and oh it's yeah it is and it's everywhere in books so yeah, yeah it's 
it's, it's, it's not something you really have to research that much. And people will have heard a lot of the mythology, I think. Especially I think so too. I, especially the Kraken. Yeah, the yeah. Kraken is one that, that I think a lot of people have heard of if they don't know like the complete mythology of it they at least know like what you're kind of talking about so let's well, get into it borrowed wasn't it it's been borrowed by different cultures, oh yeah uh throughout and you know they've had something like the greeks had something similar to the kraken i can't remember yes they did it um <laughs> they have something very similar to the kraken in the movies they call it the kraken because everybody knows what the kraken is right and as you quite rightly said earlier, the Kraken is actually North, Norse mythology, the Vikings. Uh, it is, yeah. Even, even when it comes to like David Jones' Locker and, and, and the Pirates Caribbean movie, etc., uh -huh. they've used the Kraken. Yeah. But well, the Kraken is, is cited and... It. Yeah, it's cited and mentioned in all sorts of things. I think originally, like, more modern... We know it from like 10,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I think that was one of the very first mentions of the Kraken. Um, but actually, I found found that the Kraken was um, actually first, very, very first mentioned in 1180. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> by, uh, let's see. Da -da -da. I wrote it down too. By King Sver of Norway. Um, and basically, they mention it as being a terrifying sea monster, often depicted as a giant squid or octopus. Um, the creature was a, a colossal, like it was as big as like an island. Um, and that it was able to, basically what it would do is it would wrap its arms around a ship and capsize it and then swallow crews, crews whole. Um, if that didn't work for it, then it would churn up a whirlpool that would, again, suck in the ship, capsize it, and then the Kraken would be able to eat the entire crew. Um, so kind of, that's pretty much like the leg, the legend of it. But it, as you said, it has appeared in a lot of pop popular culture. It's, it's appeared in the Pirates of the Caribbean. It's appeared in... I believe Moby Dick has kind yeah. of a, a version yeah. of it. And is uh, quite a few of the, the, the 1960s mm -hmm. uh, movies, the Greek movies. Is there one in Jason of the Argonauts? Uh, yep. And there's one in the... Uh, I can't remember now. I can't remember the names of things. I'm getting old. But yeah. <laughs> You're fine. Uh, there's there's quite there's quite a few a few times I've seen it in, in in movies, but the sixties did use quite a lot of it. Quite a lot of Kraken, yeah. <laughs> I think was responsible for reviving it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For twenty thousand leagues under the sea, and he, he's like, oh, there you go. Let's have a Kraken in there. There is a Kraken in there. That. It wasn't really mentioned until like Davy Jones' locker and all the weird stuff from the pirate sort of area. Right. Right. So yeah. Well, and then, you know, I, I was in the Navy for, for five years, and that is definitely something that we mention quite a bit. It's just Navy, like, talk is, oh, send them to Davy Jones's locker. That's pretty much what we mean is, like, let the Kraken eat them. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah. And you mentioned the ancient Greek mythology, which I definitely did some research on. Um, this one, it's not necessarily called the Kraken. No. But... It is an octopus of um, that is found in the legendary seafarer mythologies of Odysseus. So it is known as the Polymetus, and it evokes concepts of wisdom and cunning. Um, yeah. In the Greek mythology, it's it has been kind of interpreted that the pot that there's a possibility that the sea monsters that haunt Odysseus are actually symbolic of the disturbing. Um, undifferentiated aspects of the classical Greek psyche, which is like the unknown and the chaos of our very inner workings of a human being, right? And so through Odysseus's shrewd wit and cunning, he's able to be victorious over these monsters. Um, and that basically he reigns supreme. So that would be 
representative of a human of humans being able to master their own minds and overcome those unknown um, chaos inducing factoids or fact factions of their lives. So that's pretty pretty fascinating. Um, but I also found all kinds of other cool mythologies um, that don't just involve the Kraken, which is again like super terrifying and really scary. But there are some actually really positive and beautiful mythologies. So in uh, Babylonian, yeah. sorry, I don't know those. I only know the terrifying ones. Yeah, right. <laughs> They're the most popular. I mean, how, who could you play? <laughs> In Babylonian myth, the goddess Tiamat was actually closely associated with the octopus. She was waging war against deities and eventually was defeated by the storm god, uh, Marduk. From, from Tiamat's body, from her defeated body, came the heavens and the earth and forever linking octopus with creative power of the divine feminine. So that one was was pretty interesting um i didn't really find much more about it i mean i'm sure if you really want to you can find the story of tiamut tiamat uh from the babylonian mythology but that one was was really cool but we also have one from japanese mythology in shintoism um they tell stories of a colossal creature called a kamu kamai Akoro, Akoro Kamu. <laughs> I've been there, and You've this is been a there. I could believe you. Wherever you come out of your mouth, I could believe you. That's how you say it. You yeah, Akoro Kamai. I'm pretty okay. sure that I'm pretty sure that's how that one said. Um, but it's basically the spirit that is described as a combination of a human and an octopus. So it's a creature that is like part human, part octopus. And it's considered benevolent, so it's kind, it's good. Um, it resides in the waters of Funka Bay and Haka in Hokkaido. Um, but it's believed that the Akuro <laughs> Akuro um, it, it's believed that it possesses healing qualities, and a lot of the Shinto people would present tributes. To it to aid in uh, the the recovery of like injured limbs and things like that. So pretty pretty cool. <laughs> I I just I just enjoyed the pronunciation. I was just loving it. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome, isn't it? You, know, you get tongue tied up or something. I Make did. I did. Anybody out there that's Japanese, please let us know in the YouTube comments if she said it right. If I said it right. Yeah, yeah, which I, I kind of doubt that I did. <laughs> if I said it right, then cool. Kudos to me, but I, I really highly doubt it. Um, I, I give up after reading the K. That would be it. I give up. <laughs> I, the, Japanese, the Japanese just wipes me out. I just look at it. I go, nah, nah. nah I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, so, I, think, so I think for me it's French. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Akuro Kumai. I'm pretty sure that's Akuro Kumai. I don't, I might be totally wrong on that. <laughs> but it's it's really fascinating that uh, uh, a lot of the mythology surrounding octopus and squids, um, other than the Kraken, of course, uh, actually have a lot more to do with like being wise, having, you know, a lot of intelligence, having the, the kind of rejuvenating properties that octopuses do. Um, healing, you know. I also found a few other mythologies that I that I didn't take notes on, and now I'm kind of regretting that because they they were really nice as well. Um, but yeah, so I and I think that's that's again, you know, we've talked about like the ancient wisdom of of peoples from from other cultures, from you know cultures that aren't really around as much anymore and just just kind of the mythologies that they left behind like like the Hopi Native American people and their their observations of the dragonfly of transformation and you know that that uh, like eternal life you know that 
being rebirth, being reborn or rebirth. Same with the uh, with, incarnation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and same with ancient Egyptians and you know the the scarabs, the scarab beetles and cicadas and whatnot. So it's really interesting that you know we find this again with octopus and squids because you know we know that they have a very high intelligence they are able to use tools they're able to like problem solve um and they're associated with with healing and wisdom so that's that's really cool well that means if they're associated with wisdom that means they, they knew they were smart a long long time ago right so people you know, along, you know, ancient people knew that they were smart even then. So that's that's really, really fascinating. I mean, just right. the, just, just some of the things I've seen. I mean, I, I, I've you seen any videos of them playing? Uh huh. I yeah. Suppose, I've seen I've seen octopus playing basketball. Right. Was, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it, it it was when you watch the video five minutes later, you think I want an octopus. <laughs> you know, you really want one after that, after seeing it, you really want one. You, 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 you could, you can actually play with them. It's, it's, it's yeah. It, it, well, it's, it's, it's something that, that that attracts humans to animals is when you when you can you know um, associate with them. You can you can socialize with them almost. Yeah. Uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the ones in the sea, they are like dolphins and seals and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's stuff that we can we can play with that we, we're more interested in uh, than than you know nobody's interested in a bat, that way you know yeah unless it's going on your plate where nobody cares <laughs> right, so it, right. It's not a bad one, there but I like, mean they are they are a food source and they are pretty tasty I'm not gonna lie I, I have thankfully but there you go <laughs> I've had I think I've had squid. Not not so much octopus, but I've had you know calamari, like fried calamari and stuff. Uh, um, I've had both many many times. Yeah, there you go. Many many <laughs> times. I I and cuttlefish. It, uh, and Lily says that now she's going to be feeling guilty every time she eats an octopus, <laughs> which I totally get because they are they're interesting. They're fascinating creatures. They're they're so smart, like. Yeah, we, we shouldn't we shouldn't really be scoffing everything we see. I mean, that's what we do, isn't it? We see something and we we first thing we, just we do eat is it see up. It and eat it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, I'm no vegetarian. No, <laughs> I'm me neither. No yeah. vegetarian, but I, I I don't like to randomly eat things that you know just for the sake of it. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, there's billions of chickens, so I eat chicken. Yeah, sure. they're not going to run out anytime soon. Right. So that's, no. you know, that's fine. As far as my conscience is concerned, that's absolutely fine. Um, <laughs> but when you I start just, picking up I, on things like lobsters and, you know, crabs, lobsters, crayfish, right. yeah, the, you know, the, and you, you, octopus, squid, I, I, I start feeling a bit, eh, I'm not going to eat that because we're already overfishing, we're already doing damage. Yeah, like, we've, like, you know, not to add to it, really. Yeah, that's the the sad part about it is that like we've done so much damage to the, the sea creatures and the oceans and whatnot. So I mean, it is really sad, but um, in the same, in the same, uh, I don't know. I guess on the same token, like uh, that's life. But I I do agree. Like you know, it's we need to be a little more controlled with it, if you will. But I'm I'm just fascinated with the mythology of the Kraken. I think that is one of my favorites in in the whole world because it's just so freaking popular. I mean, you find it in in so many different like you know books and and literary literary like mentions and and Davy Jones, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. So I mean, it's it's all over. The Kraken is amazing. Um, it is. It's, it's one of the uh, I, I think squid and uh sperm whales are one of the nature's biggest battles ever yeah yeah you know it's like you don't think about it we don't see it you know they don't go on about oh the lion and the the, the antelope and that bit and, and things like that but <laughs> right you think about the sperm whale and a giant squid 
But when right. they go into battle, it's not it's epic. one to the other. It's, yeah. it's, there's a 50-50 chance there that one was going to kill the other. Right? Absolutely. I mean, they're... And that's, that's a battle. That's not... They're so uh, evenly matched. Yeah. You know, like it's it's really, really spectacular. Like it's really something. Um, because squids will eat sperm whales and sperm whales will definitely eat a squid. So, <laughs> you know. Oh, that's what Plus, yeah. <laughs> that's good idea. yeah. And that's why I mentioned Moby Dick because in Moby Dick, you know, he's he's chasing after this sperm whale, essentially. he He's chasing after this big white sperm whale. And as he's doing that, uh, he encounters a giant squid, you know? And so it's just, it's really fascinating how, like, okay, he encounters a giant squid. How did you not put it together that the squid is also hunting the sperm whale? <laughs> you know? Well, they, they attack each other. I've seen it. I've seen a few videos that, um, whereas the sperm whale has gone diving down looking for mm -hmm. the squid. And the squids come out of nowhere and attack the sperm whale. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. Yeah, well, that, like, it's, it's 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 none of that uh, none of that chase me down thing like you get in in the savannah with like the lions and tigers and right. Uh, it, it's actually a, a fight. It's it you know yep. they're up for it both of them and they, you know they both want to have a go and it's it's like nature's biggest biggest battle and physically biggest battle as well because they huge both. Yeah, of them. they're massive. Yeah. Definitely. So quite well, this, the squid is definitely the largest living invertebrate in the entire world. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, when, the when largest talking, eye, isn't it? Yeah, the, so yeah. Yes, they have the largest and most complex eye of uh, deep, like the ocean creatures for sure. Um, but I mean, they're they're fascinating. I love. I also think that um, maybe we could discuss. How they are able to propel themselves because i didn't happen to mention that when we were talking oh, yeah. about squids um they basically will take water <laughs> in yeah. to their to their gills or their front part of them um and then they expel it through their through their gills and that is basically how they propel themselves through the water so it's through that they're kind of hydro <laughs> they're, yeah, yeah. yeah they're right. hydraulic right. They're, <laughs> I mean, I They've got a few different ways, though, haven't they, of, of doing it? They've got a couple of different ways of movement. Yeah, which... they do also have fins on, on the sides of their body. So that the long part of their body, they do have those fins that are, they kind of flap like ears, so that also helps to propel them. Um, oh, and I forgot to talk about the ink. The ink? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we still got some time. We can talk about the ink. Um, <laughs> Inky! That was it. But, their ink is actually a defense mechanism. So squids and octopus both use ink to um, basically stun a predator and to leave behind kind of a, a shadow, like a false octopus. So when they when they eject this ink into the ocean, it kind of it kind of like Confused. what it, yeah, it confuses the predator, it's but it also stays in that one place that they that they ejected it, so that it it kind of appears to be a squid or an octopus in the shape of them, right? And then they skedaddle, right? So it confuses it confuses the predator, um, but squids also have an extra extra bit with their ink, so that when they eject it, it actually also stuns the predator by like it kind of stings them it, it almost like oh i read about it and it's it's basically it's it has an effect on them that it it makes them confused for a little while so it's there's a chemical reaction and obviously like um it it really really is kind of painful for the predator so um which i thought again was really really interesting that the squid certain squid species can do that yeah, uh, cuttlefish can do it as well, can't they? Cuttlefish can, yes. Yeah. yeah one of the interesting things I, I, I know about the, the ink from octopus and squid uh -huh. is the deeper you go in the ocean, uh -huh. the lighter the ink becomes. So, like, if it's really, really dark, really deep, sorry, 
in the ocean. Yeah. The, it, it expels white ink. Oh, interesting. Rather than black ink, because there's no point in expelling black ink because nobody can see it. Right. So they expel the, the, the white ink instead. So it, it, it goes down. But the, the deeper you go, the, the lighter you know. it is. Yeah. That's fascinating. I didn't know that at all. Yeah, I know I, that. Yeah, um, species of octopus, but you know, the ones that are found really low down expel yeah. white ink rather than the, than the black ink that we're all used to. Right. Well, and I know that the Dumbo octopus or the Umbrella octopus, they don't actually have ink glands, so they don't expel ink at all. No, um, the, serene, the Serene doesn't, no. Yeah, uh, no. no that, that was the only one that I know a little bit about. Really. <laughs> no, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, and it is, it's basically because the uh, Pokemon, the, the, I think one of them is based, uh, well, they're so... based on one. Yeah, I mean they're so there's they live so far deep in the oceans and stuff that there aren't a lot of predators that prey on them. So they don't really need I guess they don't really have a need to to be able to expel ink because they just they're not really running from a whole lot of things, if you will. They're you know as well. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty they are they're cute. so cute. They're super cute. Yeah. <laughs> they remind me of the little ghosts that pack them. Yeah, <laughs> remember those. If you just put two fins on the side of their head, there it's like, yeah, that's little ghost that Pac Man. They do, it? that's the Pac Man ghost, absolutely. Yeah. And you so, know what is so funny about that? Is, uh, yeah, one of, one of the Pac Man ghosts is actually named Inky. That's uh, probably why. I bet, they, I bet they've seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you I, know? I, I'm not that much of a nerd that I actually know the names of Pac-Man ghosts. Okay, well, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you admitted it. <laughs> I did it. You're right. I'm a nerd. <laughs> well, um, I guess we we've, we've reached the uh, end of the podcast where, you know, we we do our shameless plug and possibly talk about what we're going to talk about next week. So, what do you got, Simon? You got anything coming up this week? Anything fun? Uh, I, hopefully, I'll make some videos this week um, because I've pretty much sold out of mantis. Uh, oh wow! So I'm I'm selling uh, isopods this week only, probably for okay. a few weeks because I'm still waiting for. I've got loads and loads of oods in here, waiting for them to hatch. So until yeah. they hatch, I can grow them up a bit. I'm a bit stuck. I I, I underestimated demand so <laughs> <laughs> i've been bought out basically um <laughs> so I, i'm finding myself at a loose end quite a lot during the day now so i'm probably sure. going to be able to get some time to make some videos i know that liliana got uh four tarantulas this week yeah i saw your unboxing video from yeah they're, they're, they're from bats but they're originally from shady Oh, what do you know? How awesome. Yeah, shady slings. So, Rock on Shady. Be, uh, definitely doing some kind of rehouse for, for them. Okay, cool. It's spectacular because they're only small tarantulas at the moment. They're only slings. Uh, but yeah, we'll be doing, definitely doing a video for them. And uh, I'll probably think of some other things. I used to be able to think of one every day, so I'm sure I can come up with something. Oh, yeah. I'm and, sure yeah, you will. I know you will. I'm not sure. The Mantis Garden. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram as The Mantis Garden. So the Mantis yeah. Garden. And join his Discord. Crazy, he has just Mantis Garden. Yeah, the Mantis Garden. He's also on Discord. Um, I actually really enjoy the Mantis Garden's uh Discord server. You guys are a lot of fun. Um and that's where you can find actually a lot of our fellow YouTubers who and we readers, talk yeah. about and chat with a lot here uh in inverticast so you can find bazans and eden's inverse you know shady things also hangs out with us in the discord she's around i am also in the mantis guard at discord um so you can you can find me if you'd like uh um, ramblings tarantula ramblings Paul, oh yeah he's in there yeah, yeah a few in there yeah yeah. You know, we've got a pretty good you've got a really great community there that everybody's very sweet and friendly and um, I mean, yeah. we, we we jostle each other a little bit and kind of joke around yeah, and stuff. But just human they are. If you don't, then stay away. Right? <laughs> no, no, they're, away. they're fantastic. <laughs> you guys are fantastic. I'm not even worried about that. Um, 
I guess I have a couple of shameless plugs. Just I've got a couple of videos that I am almost done editing, so I will be dropping those. And I've got tons of species spotlight and rehousings to do. Um, it's just a matter of me doing it. So <laughs> help me do it. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll get that done. Uh, otherwise, I'm waiting to hear if my Cereopicus libidum um, got the job done and if uh, Gavin over at Ghosties Tarantulas, if, if his female has dropped an egg sac just yet. I think it's still a little early. I think like we still need about another week or two. Um, but I'll let you guys know if I've got, you know, I've got some slings coming my way. So we'll see what happens. That'll be cool. That'll be cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've got a few males that I'm really hoping I can send off to help them breed. I'll probably get in touch with Jackie again because I know she's got probably a few females that, you know, breeding projects. <laughs> but other than that, I don't have anything else. Um, if you guys like Inverticast, please like and subscribe. Check us out on most of the audio streaming services. I know we're on Audible, Spotify, uh, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio. Um, yeah, we're like everywhere. We also have our own Discord. So I will, of course, post a link for that in the description below. Um, if we missed anything and you know something about octopuses or the Kraken that we didn't happen to mention, go ahead and write a comment down below. Let me know. And of course, let me know if I pronounced uh, that Japanese word correctly. <laughs> Yeah, no, I butchered a lot. I butchered a lot of words this week. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Don't worry about it. No, it's, oh. uh, it's good fun, actually. It was something I was afraid of because I, as soon as you start going under the water, I lose the plot. You know? Oh, yeah, no. Because yeah. normally I wing it every week and I, I, I believe that I can keep going for an hour. Without, <laughs> without any research, you know, added research. <laughs> I, at this time, I, I was a bit, you know, a bit worried because uh, I, I've never really read up on cephalopods. Well, so and I'm worried. afraid yeah. that I you might have opened, I, I know, and I might have <laughs> opened a Pandora's box of invertebrates because apparently there's a ton in the ocean, like, that I didn't, I didn't even know. Yeah, so we'll just, we'll just, We'll just keep that one to ourselves. <laughs> um, oh, Shady Thing says it was nice to listen to while rehousing teas. Thanks. Thank you, Shady Things. I appreciate that. I'm glad that um, we were able to provide a little entertainment while you were rehousing some teas. That's awesome. And then, uh, yeah, so next week, what do you think we should discuss? Because I'm not really sure. Well, when you said that, uh, <laughs> the ocean. I thought if I could skip the ocean and just go on land a little bit and then go in the water. How about uh, water, freshwater invertebrates, like uh, I don't know, freshwater insects, let's say. Okay. Might like dragonflies. It's mollusk and there's, you know. Yeah. Or like, um, what do we got, like sea urchins? No. Water boatmen, water scorpions, there's, there's, there's tons of them. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, I think that would be awesome. So freshwater invertebrates for next week. Um, we will do the research so that you don't have to. And we'll see you guys next week then. That sounds perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ivan. <laughs>